At the 1942 U.S. Chess Championships, Carl Pilnick was facing the great Sammy Ryszewski. Pilnick's white in this position, and Sammy Ryszewski, as usual, is winning the game. Let's have a look. So there's a little bit of trouble, and Ryszewski guards against a perpetual check along this diagonal. The queen could have come in for a check and then back to the back rank, back and forth. Ryszewski guards against it, and Pilnick's heart, I'm sure, sank. Now Ryszewski has a simple plan. He's going to push the pawn and checkmate. So Pilnick pushes to open up that diagonal. Now he's trying to get the queen off of that long diagonal, but Ryszewski has a plan. And he probably chuckles to himself. Check. Takes the pawn with check. And then gets back to the diagonal. Pilnick, they're now on move 91 or 92, brings his queen over to f5. And it seems to stop the two black pawns, or slow them down a little bit from advancing. But Ryszewski has a plan. He pushes the pawn anyway. He sees the end of the game, and poor he feels sorry for his friend Carl Pilnick, because he knows what's going to happen. Pilnick's going to capture the pawn, check, and then check to simplify the game. He'll give away those two pawns in order to now get his king around, and come and capture that last pawn and win the game. Well, we're going to come back to this position and see if that's really what happened in that game. But first, let's do a quick review of the different ways you can have a draw in a game. So, first, white to play and draw in all of these positions. In this one, white gives away the bishop for the final pawn for insufficient material. Remember, insufficient means not enough, and material is something used to make something. So, insufficient material means not enough pieces to make a checkmate. And this is a draw. King against king, or king and bishop against king, or king and knight against king. Those are all draws. In this one, white's about to get checkmated. Either queen to b2 or rook to b8. Those are both checkmates. But white notices none of the pawns can move, and the king can't move. The only thing that he has that can move is his rook, so he gives it away. Check, check, and after it's captured, it's a draw by stalemate. In this next one, white realizes the black king is open. So, he goes for a continual check until his opponent uh, finally agrees to a draw, or they realize it's a draw by third occurrence. This is what we call a perpetual check, where you just keep checking your opponent and they can't escape it. Black doesn't want the draw, but too bad. That's the rule. Once both players go back and forth and you have the exact same position with the same person on move three times, then either player can claim the game to be a draw. So this is a draw by third occurrence. And then in this position, this one's a little bit odd, but white realizes that black's going to push those pawns, and one of them will promote and become a new queen, and black will easily win the game. But white captures, forking the king of the knight, the knight takes back, then he takes the other pawn, now that the knight's deflected, and with two knights, you can't force a checkmate. You can try, and if your opponent cooperates, you can get them. But as long as the king is trying to stay out of checkmate, then eventually this will be a draw by the 50 move rule. And the 50 move rule says at any point, if you go 50 moves and there's no captures made on the board and no pawns moved, in other words, nobody's making any progress towards winning, then either player can call the game to be a draw. 50, 5-0. All right, so let's have a look at some positions that are a little trickier. Here, white obviously would love to get a draw. White only has a bishop and a pawn to go with the king, and black has two pawns with the knight. White sacrifices the bishop because now he realizes that he can block this pawn, and there's nothing that black can do to prevent the next move, which is pawn to f4. Black's last pawn will get traded off the board. Insufficient material. In this one, you have to be pretty clever to get your insufficient material. You have to do your moves in the right order. First, the king comes to attack that pawn. The bishop moves to protect it. Then you deflect the bishop with the promotion. Bishop takes, and once again, insufficient material. This is a stalemate one. It doesn't look like it because white has a king that can move, a queen that can move, and a pawn that can move. But white cleverly gives away the queen in just the right spot so that the queen will be gone, the pawn will be blocked, and the king's escape squares will all be guarded. Queen to d6 check. Forcing the bishop to take, and now the pawn can't move, the queen is gone, 
and nowhere for the king to go either. In this one, white's going to earn a draw by a perpetual check, third occurrence. White has to rip up that black wall by sacrificing the rook. White's obviously facing an in-your-ear checkmate. The queen is coming down to a1, so white says, oh, wow, a draw would be really nice. White gives away the rook. Check, 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 and back and forth, third occurrence. It's a draw by a perpetual check. Now, with your perpetual checks, a lot of times our natural instinct is to look at the closer check. But here there's three possible checks in the back rank. You have to follow the line of play and calculate ahead. What's going to happen in two moves, three moves, four moves? Here you can see, if you take your time, that going straight up not going to work because this next check is not safe. The pawn would take you. If you go to e8, now you can play another check, but after this pawn blocks, you have nothing. So, in the end, our answer is queen to c8, check. Now the king comes out, check. He goes back, check. He comes up, check. Now when they block it, our queen's in the perfect position. And it's a different perpetual check pattern, and white gets the draw. So you have to think about where is that next check and the one after that coming from when you start to plan a perpetual check. Here you might guess, seeing those two knights on the board, what's going to happen. Sure enough, the bishop captures and the king comes over. That pawn can't be protected. And eventually, hopefully, a draw by the 50 move rule. All right, let's get back to Pilnik and Ryshevsky to finish up our lesson. So, as you may recall, Pilnik plays on move 92 Queen to f5, and Ryshevsky throws the bait. Here it is. Take my g-pawn. Well, guess what? The game ended very quickly. Because Pilnik made a move, and Ryshevsky, frustrated at himself, agreed to the draw. It's true. So, what move did Pilnik play? He found a move that would force Ryshevsky to either give away his queen, he's not going to do that, or stalemate Pilnik. He plays queen f2. And now the black queen has nowhere safe to move. The queen is pinned to the king. Pilnik's going to capture Ryshevsky's black queen. Or, if Ryshevsky captures, of course, it's a draw by stalemate when the queen captures here. There's nothing that can move for white. All right, that's it for draws. I'll check you later.